So I'm Rémi Schweitzer. I'm currently working at the University of uh, Lausanne. Uh, I am working on a project uh, related to food. That's not why I'm here, but uh, I'm working on a project on consumer participation in relation uh, to uh, decision regarding sustainable uh, food system. But I did my PhD thesis uh, at the Swiss Graduate School for Public Administration, also in Lausanne, uh, about uh, the example of uh, the BISES, uh, which are a, tradi a traditional form of cooperative or community governance uh, in the Swiss Alps, in Valais. So uh, BISES are an irrigation network in Switzerland, uh, which have been built uh, a century, a cent uh, well, on va uh, BISES are irrigation network in Switzerland, uh, which date back a lot of centuries. So they are uh, four or five or even six century old, and they have always been managed and uh, operated in a collective way through common property governance structure called uh, consortage. Uh, so when the state developed in Switzerland, so for instance when uh, the public policies develop, environmental public policies, but also when uh, the Swiss civil law was unificated, so when the Swiss civil code was adopted, uh, the state uh, was uh, really convinced of the importance of these traditional uh, modes of uh, governance. So for instance in the Swiss civil code, uh, the common property uh, scheme are recognized, even though private property is the main form of property today, but there are some articles that recognize this form of property. And the uh, traditional governance structure, so the consortage or the Almond uh, in, in German, are also recognized in a specific uh, articles. So this uh, civil code was really uh, written with uh, a, a strong uh, in, um, interest towards these traditional forms of governance. Uh, later, when uh, these forms of governance struggled to survive or, or to maintain their uh, their operation. Uh, the Swiss uh, state, uh, I'm speaking now of the canton and of the municipality, helps them to, to, to survive, so to say, uh, financially by providing technical expertise and so on. So that's why in some cases this consortage could survive, but in other cases, all uh, despite this help, they, dis they disappeared. So we have a lot of different uh, historical trajectories uh, between the different uh, consortages in Valais. Yeah. So cooperative governance is presented as a third way of governing natural resources between state intervention on the one hand and uh, private regulation or, or the market regulation, so to say. So this third way uh, is uh, really trendy at the moment. So there are a lot of scientific publication, but also practic practitioners' interest. The theory of the commons is, is well known. So the avant advantages of this system is that it's really a bottom-up system where the users can put in place the rule they want to uh, manage the resource. Uh, and they also can share the different uh, uses of the resource between them in a way that is supposed to be uh, socially uh, more sustainable but also more democratic and more participative. Uh, the thing is that this system can also be rather exclusive, that is that when you are within the community uh, yes, it's democratic and you have a sharing of the resource, but when you want to come from the outside, it's difficult to be integrated uh, in the network. Another thing is that uh, even though there is a common property on the water uh, in the irrigation system, the property on land uh, remains private, so you have a lot of inequalities uh, on that level and the, the social benefit of common property are somehow uh, re relativized uh, by this private allocation uh, of land. The question of sustainability is a really complex uh, one uh, because sustainability is a multifaceted concept that involves a lot of uh, different and diverging themes. So social sustainability, economic sustainability and environmental sustainability are not the same and obviously cannot be achieved at the same time. It's really difficult to have uh, the three at, at the same time because they involve trade-off and choice between different alternatives. So what I must say is that from my work, what we saw is that neither uh, the traditional form of cooperative governance, but uh, neither the private uh, forms and uh, state intervention, so neither of these forms are, so to say, sustainable. They 
all have advantages and disadvantages. Some are more uh, socially sustainable, other are more economically profitable uh, for the people who are included uh, in uh, the community, for example. But the question is really difficult. Uh, the question of sustainability is really difficult to, uh, to answer. What we must say is that uh, traditional cooperative governance uh, really has a form of cultural importance uh, in Switzerland uh, because of all this a social structure that has been built and managed and this traditional know-how, uh, informal, often in informal, that uh, subsisted for a long, long time. So from the point of view of the uh, uh, duration, yes, it's sustainable, it, it's a long-term, those are long-term institutions, but the, the question of sustainability is rather more complex uh, than temporality.